Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a very fascinating topic, lightning. Because even though International Space Station is technically responsible for studying space, it also spends a lot of time studying our own planet Earth. And there's nothing more fascinating on our planet, at least in my opinion, than the mysteries behind what exactly is lightning. So let's talk about what NASA has recently discovered and welcome to the Math. So all of this began a few years ago when the Japanese scientists discovered that one of the lightning bolts that was detected by the International Space Station very close to one of the Japanese cities also seemed to produce a huge amount of gamma ray radiation. You know, that super dangerous radiation that comes from various objects like neutron stars like this one right here, the highest level of radiation out there, and the type of radiation that can pretty much go through most of the materials very easily. In other words, it's that type of radiation that most people think of when you say radiation, the super super dangerous one. But in Japan it became a huge issue because of the nuclear reactor disaster back in 2013 due to the tsunami that damaged the reactor. So a lot of research was focused on detecting gamma ray radiation and also just focused around general idea of how to protect the civilian population. And so discovering this huge blob of gamma ray radiation coming out of nowhere kind of surprised these scientists. And over time we realized that this is a very common phenomenon happening with every single lightning strike and today we refer to this as terrestrial gamma ray flashes or TGF. NASA has even created this beautiful animation that shows you where these gamma ray flashes happen around the planet and they always correspond to the location of a typical lightning strike. There are about 500 of these events every single day. This is what they look like if you were to kind of freeze the frame and try to capture this in that one single moment. But what's interesting about this event and what's been kind of discovered more recently is that it's a lot more complicated and a lot more, I guess you can call it crazy, than anyone imagined. We've been trying to map these events across the planet in the last few years and try to discover exactly what happens when the lightning strikes because the amount of energy generated is just insane. And although luckily for us most of the gamma rays seem to escape into the outer space and don't really point at the planet, nevertheless the actual generation of energy is huge and so large as a matter of fact that it even ends up creating a lot of after effects including antimatter that sticks around the area and starts interacting with other particles. On top of this, following a typical lightning strike, we do actually detect a little bit of gamma ray radiation pointing at the planet, and then, as I mentioned, there's a lot of different reactions that happen as a result of both the interaction of antimatter with regular matter and the gamma rays causing certain molecules to change into more radioactive isotopes. So in other words, there's this huge cascade of things happening almost instantly. And so the recent paper that you can discover in Science Magazine and also in the description below discusses their discoveries of what happens in those 0.3 of a second. Basically in those 300 milliseconds a huge amount of stuff happens, a lot of energy is being transferred and released and all of this is sort of mind-blowing. All of this is based on the observation of one single lightning strike that was detected over Indonesia in 2018 and they essentially took all of the data from um, the International space station and more specifically from this apparatus right here known as SIM that has x-ray detection, UV detection, optical cameras and gamma ray detection uh, devices so it's able to detect pretty much all of the frequencies needed uh, to study lightning and by using the data from ISS they were able to discover what happens in those first milliseconds when the lightning strikes and specifically they were able to explain the generation of these gamma rays and where they're actually coming from. The first thing that happens when the lightning strikes is that the electrons get stripped from various atoms and this releases the initial gamma rays that we detect. These electrons are then accelerated to ridiculous speeds because of the electromagnetic radiation produced in the lightning and start traveling really 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 fast. But as these electrons travel across the electromagnetic field they're also forced to travel across the curved pathways and this changes their direction thus releasing even more energy. The gamma rays that are released here are known under the concept of oh boy Bramstrang-Lung radiation. 
I'm sure there's going to be a lot of comments about this from my German fans. But anyway, so this radiation is often produced when an electron changes its direction, and in this case, if the direction is changed dramatically, a huge amount of radiation is released. And this is how the other gamma rays are formed. And all of this happens in approximately one-fifth or even less of a second. And following this, all of these gamma rays that are created can do two things. One of them is start creating a lot of um, radioisotopes, or basically changing one molecule into another molecule, and then also start producing a lot of antimatter if suddenly all of these gamma rays start interacting with each other and colliding, producing um, particles and antiparticles, or basically matter and antimatter. On top of that, we start seeing UV light as well as oxygen in the atmosphere becomes ionized through the interaction with gamma rays, and we also start seeing these unusual effects known as sprites and elves. Now, these are even more mysterious and we can't really explain them yet, but they do appear above the lightning in the upper atmosphere. And remember, not even a second has passed yet. This is still about one third of a second. And these UV emissions and also these sprites and elves can extend from a single lightning strike up to about 800 kilometers. All of this, once again, in one third of a second. So from the time that the lightning strike happens up to about one third of a second, all of this expands like a balloon, creating this huge procession of gamma rays, UV light, and a lot of other things that we just can't really see. And this is just the beginning of what we've discovered. This was only discovered in the last few years. Before that, we had no idea all of this happens and happens so quickly. And I'm pretty sure that following this study, many other studies will start coming out and discovering even more things that happen during these incredibly beautiful events. And remember, there are approximately 500 lightning strikes per day around our planet, so this happens about 500 times every day. But I also wanted to mention one thing, even though I did say that it produces a lot of gamma rays and UV light, it's still not really dangerous to humans. The radiation produced here happens relatively quickly, and even though there is an afterglow, and you would be able to detect it if you had a gamma ray detector, it's not really that much higher than, for example, the amount of radiation you would experience by flying in an airplane. And it also only lasts for like a minute. But nevertheless, when it comes to lightning, I'm always really excited to study a little bit more about it and find out what really happens in those few moments that we're just unable to perceive as humans. Anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the study I mentioned in the description below and also this Japanese study uh, about the lightning strike I mentioned that came out a few months ago. On that note, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe if you still haven't and share this with someone who loves science and wants to learn more about space. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.